It's time to dismantle the bed on our 66 Chevy. I think the guy that spot welded this was getting paid by the weld. Boy, did we have trouble busting it apart. When Eric's done with it, it'll be holier than Mother Teresa. Matt shares his hinge design for the dump bed, and we check in with Empire Fab to see our new engine bay. Bing's built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. All right, guys, the time has finally come. We are finally going to start cutting this thing apart and getting the tilt bed ready. I finally got some help. This is another Eric. He's going to be helping me out, which I desperately needed. But first, he's got to join the club. Thank you. And now we're ready. Okay, there's a couple challenges with cutting this thing apart. We ultimately want to split it on the body line, which is actually held together by spot welds along this flange. But I prefer to do that once this whole bed side is loose. I've already WD-40'd up all these front bolts to bring off the front section. This U-channel, the rest of it is going to have to get cut out, what's left of the carriage bolts. Thankfully, the tailgate is just going to be two bolts on either side. But then this U-channel, this beefed up back one, is, has got four bolts on either side. So we'll have to blow all that apart. Once this bed side is loose and on its own, we can set it down, grind off, find the spot welds, and use split them and then make our body line cut continue out through the front and the back lips here. Easier said than done. After some grueling hours, the bed's blown apart. We probably tried way too hard to save this rear U-channel. This is the rear most that sits under the tailgate. And we were cutting at it, hacking away at everything we could see that was holding it together, all the bolts. But it turns out, right there, there was a hidden lap weld Eric caught at the last minute digging around with a flashlight. So we're gonna go home, recuperate, come back tomorrow, and actually go and split the bed sides into two, and then go consult Matt and get this design figured out so we can actually go and build back in our tilt bed. Lots to go, not a little time. Eric just finished disassembling the bed into a, a bunch of pieces. So now we're gonna take a look at what, why did he do that? What are we doing with this bed that needed to come apart like that? So originally, the bed was essentially two pieces. It was the main portion of the bed, the bed sides, the front panel, the other bed side, and the tailgate. Tailgate drops down, truck bed. We all know about that. But that is not what we are gonna do with Lockjaw. We are gonna make this bed scissor open like we did with the hood in the opposite direction. So we have to split the bed in half to make that work. These beds originally came with a seam here but it was all spot welded, the whole length of this thing. And luckily I've got the CAD part of the job, which is a lot easier than sitting there and cutting spot welds. Um, sorry, Eric. But let me show you what it is we're doing, how we're gonna attach it to the chassis and how this bed is gonna open up. Inside the bed here, we, we need to attach it to the Roadster Shop chassis, but we can't use the original style of, of lower bed rails, which we can see in our scan, but that won't work anymore because the bed is now split uh, horizontally into two pieces. We need to support the lower panel at the split point so that there's rigidity in that panel and it's not just kind of flopping around. I, I don't have in the CAD right now, I don't have the whole chassis loaded up, but the few points in this bracket that I've created here, 
that are gonna pick up on the frame rail and then that bracket is gonna, gonna arch up and it is gonna grab on to the, the seam that used to exist. And we're gonna use, we're gonna hold the lower part of the bed in place with that bracket. There'll be a few stiffeners on it, which you don't see in the CAD here, but it'll be really similar to what we did on the, on the underside of the hood to support the hood and grab on to the hinge mechanism that we built to have our reverse opening hood. And, and then I've got to grab on to the structure that we're gonna build for the upper bed, which is shown here in this light blue color, and we're gonna to have to have that thing open up. So I got to do another six bar linkage. And, and here it is, and we're gonna show it operating now. Let's take a look at this here. Oh yeah, and then we'll open this bed up. And you can see as that bed starts to open up that our, our upper bed is lifting away from the lower bed portion without moving backwards and crashing into the remainder of the sheet metal that's been left in place. And going along with it is our tailgate. So let's open it up a little bit more here. Here we are, and you can see that six bar mechanism. It's unfolding as the main link, which is highlighted in blue here, is driving. The other driven links are unfolding and causing the rotation of that bed to happen. I'm still tweaking with the geometry a little bit right now so that these links right here, so this is one solid link, this is another solid link right here, and we don't want those to over center. Sometimes it's okay to over center a little bit if you've got a way to bring it back. It can actually lock a mechanism in place, which can be nice depending on what you're doing. But I think right now, uh, what I'm gonna go for is I want this main link here to go over vertical without the driven links over centering. So that'll, and we'll have a spring that helps assist this thing lift up, and that'll park the bed into a nice position uh, that's pretty stable, supported pulled on by that spring so that when we go to a show, we open this thing up, it's gonna stay up, it's not gonna crash down and chop your fingers off or anything. All right, I've gotta finish this linkage up. Eric's gotta cut this bed apart. We gotta make all these brackets so we can get them over to Sean at Empire Fab. Sean has to put them onto the truck and finish the sheet metal work. He also is almost done with the inner fender wells and the firewall. And then we're off to SEMA pretty soon. Lots to do. The easiest thing to do is just to do it. So last time you guys were here, it was a while we were working on the transmission tunnel and the driveline tunnel. This is the tunnel. It's actually two pieces welded somewhere around here in metal finish. That's fully welded to here. And then we did the driveline tunnel just straight back. Decided not to put any beads in it, just like the look of it smooth. And we wanted to focus more on the engine base. We got all this fully welded in and that is all set up final. Right now on the engine bay, we've got driver's side tub laid out and the pieces made. We have the clearance over here for the hood with a factory style spring. Instead of doing shocks, they're gonna do a spring setup on this. And so that has clearance for all of that and everything to work in here. And we'll just kind of design this all together with the firewall. Ideally, once we get those done, we'll stamp everything and then we'll put the pieces together, fully weld them, metal finish them, and get them bolted in. Um, and then we might do some other little details and details and details and details and details and details tell, tell, in here. <laughs> Not sure this thing's recording. It's that easy. So last time you guys were here, I don't even remember what we, we had done. So right now, both the tubs are made and welded together. The inner beads are done and cut around. We have an AC bulkhead here to tie into the AC pump and then go through the firewall to the condenser. The firewalls are ran and the beads are done on the firewall. We step down for the uh, rib that's 
structuring to the core support. The tubs themselves, I've only ran beads on the outer side of one tub right now. We're gonna run the beads on the inner on the other tub. The die we ended up making for the Pullmax, it's a male and female, and it kind of resembles the inside radius of what this is here, and then we're just doing it opposite on the tubs. And then so we did the same die on the firewall that we did on the, the tubs here. But after we run it, we have to hand drive and clean them out because the dies leave it squared up. So we ran it straight. That way it looks good off of the rib. It's evenly spaced off of what the rib's gonna be in there. Uh, we fit it around the air boxes, kind of around there. And then also on the inside of this, we put an AC bulkhead here so the air or the AC lines can run across in here off the tire and then go through the bulkheads there. I mounted the pedal assembly. So we had to cut their pedal assembly out for the beading on the firewall so that it would sit flush with the firewall. We added, uh, I have uh, these weld on cage nuts that we spot welded to the firewall on both sides to bolt the tubs in. So once we get the rest of the mounts done on the front tubs, we will end up pulling the cab back off, welding the firewall with the kickback all as one piece, metal finishing it, and then welding it to the actual cab itself, and then cleaning up all the welds. We'll put it all back together, and then we can focus on the hood cut, which is gonna be the next part to this puzzle piece. That end. Looks like we're getting into crunch time. Lockjaw is supposed to be unveiled in Amsoil's booth at the SEMA show. How are we going to pull it off? Like and subscribe to find out.